Hello there. In this video, we will be learning about applications of dimensional analysis. So, there are three major applications of dimensional analysis. The first one is to check the consistency of dimensional equation. The second one is to derive the relationship between physical quantities in physical phenomenon. And the third one is to change the units from one system to another. And in this video, we will be studying about this particular application in detail that is to change the units from one system to another. For an example, you have a particular unit in the SI system and you want to convert it into the CGS system. For an example, you have one Newton. So Newton is a unit of force in SI system and Dyne is the unit of force in CGS system. So if you are interested to find how much one Newton would be equal to, let's say one Newton would be equal to how much Dyne, we would be able to use this application. So before we get started with this, first let's throw some light on what is dimensional analysis. So dimensional analysis is a method used in physics and engineering to analyze the relationship between different physical quantities by identifying their dimensions. So you might be familiar with the dimensional formula as well. So basic formula of density is mass per unit volume, right? So the dimensional formula for density would become m1 and l raised to the power negative 3 and t0. So this entire thing is what is called the dimensional formula and these exponents that is 1 in mass, negative 3 in length and 0 in time. These are called the dimensions. A dimensional formula represents a physical quantity in terms of the fundamental dimensions. Like in this example, density is the physical quantity and mass, length and time are the fundamental dimensions. And we are basically representing this physical quantity in these basic terms. So in this video, we will understand how this dimensional formula can help us change the units from one system to another. So, let's understand the steps to change the units from one system to another. For an example, there is a system called SI system and there's a system called CGS system and there's a physical quantity, let's say force. I know that force is basically measured in Newtons in SI system and force is measured in Dyne in CGS system. Let's say I'm interested to find 1 Newton equals to how much Dyne? So this particular application will help us find out this missing quantity. First step is let n1 be the numerical value in the given unit system. So in our case, the given unit system is the SI system. So I can say the value of n1 equals to 1 in our case. Let u1 be the unit in the given system. So unit in the given system is Newtons for us. Let n2 be the numerical value in the required unit system. So this particular thing, I can call it as n2. So as you can see right now, n2 is a variable for us. We have to find the value of n2 and u2 be the unit in the required system. So this would be the u2 would be dyne for us. All we need to do is we need to use this particular formula that is n1 u1 equals to n2 u2. Now, this is a very important and an interesting step in this application. Let's understand this in detail. When I say n1 u1 equals to n2 u2. What we are saying is u1 in place of u1, let's keep the dimensional formula of that physical quantity. So m1 raised to the power a, l1 raised to the power b and t1 raised to the power c. And that would be multiplied with n1. That would be equal to n2 times, let's apply the dimensional formula uh, for u2. So let's say it would be m2 raised to the power x, l2 raised to the power y, and t2 raised to the power z. Now, the reason I have taken this m1, this as m2, this as l1, this as l2, this as t1, this as t2 is because these are a part of different systems. So for an example, this is SI system and this is CGS system. So in SI system, we know that m1, basically the fundamental unit in mass is nothing but kilogram. But in the case of CGS, it would be grams. Similarly, L1 for the SI system would be meters, but L2 for the CGS would be centimeters. But for the time, it would still remain the same. It would be seconds and seconds, irrespective of the system. One very important step in this particular application is that the value of A would be equal to the value of X. Similarly, the value of B would be equal to the value of Y and the value of C would be equal to the value of Z. What it means that the dimensions are same. The dimensions are same. And what would be the reason for that? For an example, the area of square 
in the SI system would be let's say x meter square. Now, in the CGS system, the area would be something different y, but it would be centimeter square. Now, what are the what are the dimensions? Dimensions are these exponents. If you can see, the exponent power is still the same, right? So it can't be like the moment you are converting from an SI system to a CGS system, this centimeter square will become centimeter cube. That is not going to happen. So I can just say that all these things would be same. Let's say N2 is unknown for us. So we can simply say N2 would be equal to N1. And this can be written as M1 divided by M2 raised to the power of A because A and X are same. So I'm just uh, replacing X with A only. And similarly, I can say L1 divided by L2 raised to the power B and T1 divided by T2 raised to the power C. Now, this is the formula that we have to use to find this unknown value of M N2. I know that it might sound a little complicated. So let's take this example where we are converting one Newton to N2 times dyne and we are interested to find the value of N2. Let's use the same steps. First thing we need to know is the dimensional formula for force. Now the dimensional formula for force is m1 l1 t raised to the power negative 2. So you can just relate it with like force equals to mass times acceleration, right? And like in a SI system, we know that mass is in kilograms, acceleration is in meter per second square. So it would give us m raised to the power 1, that is one dimension in mass, one in length and negative 2 in time. The value of n1 for us is 1. Now the dimensional formula for force can be simply written as m1, l1, t1 and the dimensions are 1, 1 and negative 2. That would be equal to n2 and here the dimensional formula would become m2, l2, t2 and the dimensions are still the same 1, 1 and negative 2. So we can find n2 as 1 multiply by m1 divided by m2 raised to the power 1 L1 divided by L2 raised to the power 1 and T1 divided by T2 raised to the power negative 2. The value of M1 is kilogram. The value of M2 is grams raised to the power 1. The value of L1 is meters. The value of L2 is centimeters raised to the power 1. The value of T1 is second and the value of T2 is again second raised to the power negative 2. Now this can be written as 1000 grams divided by gram raised to the power 1 this gram and gram gets cancelled uh, 100 centimeters divided by centimeters this centimeter and centimeter gets cancelled raised to the power 1 so this gives us the value of 10 raised to the power 5 5 so we can say that the value of 1 newton would be equal to 10 raised to the power 5 dime Let's do another example where we'll convert Joule to Urge. Now Joule is the SI unit of energy and Urge is the CGS unit of energy. We'll use the same concept that is N1 U1 equals to N2 U2. In this case, N1 would be let's say 1 Joule. Uh, so N1 would be 1, U1 would be Joule is equal to N2 into Urge. The dimensional formula for energy, m1, l2, t raised to the power negative 2. You can simply relate it with energy or the work done will have the same dimensional formula. And the dimensional formula for work done is force times displacement. So force we had already studied in the last, this one. So it was m1, l1, t raised to the power negative 2. So we'll simply multiply it with l. So this brings us to m1, l2, t raised to the power negative 2. Now, let's just use this. So one times uh, instead of uh, j that is the u1 we can simply write it as m1 l1 t1 uh, the dimensions would be 1 2 and negative 2 would be equal to n2 here we can write it as m2 l2 t2 uh, and the dimensions would still be the same like that so we can simply write n2 equals to 1 it would be m1 divided by m2 raised to the power 1 L1 divided by L2 raised to the power 2 and T1 divided by T2 raised to the power negative 2. T1 and T2 both are second so this can be cancelled. So M1 uh, is kilogram and M2 is gram raised to the power 1. L1 is meter, L2 is centimeter raised to the power 2. This can be written as 
थाउजेंड ग्राम्स डिवाइडेड बाई ग्राम रेस टू द पार वन एंड हंड्रेड सेंटीमीटर्स डिवाइडेड बाई सेंटीमीटर्स रेस टू द पार टू ग्राम एंड ग्राम गेट्स कैंसल सेंटीमीटर एंड सेंटीमीटर गेट्स कैंसल इट वुड बी टेन रेस टू द पार फोर एंड इट वुड बी टेन रेस टू द पार थ्री सो इट वुड बी टेन रेस टू द पार सेवन so we can say that 1 joule equals to 10 raised to the power 7 earth so this is how the dimensional analysis can help you convert the unit from one system to another and that is a very important application of the dimensional analysis i hope you are now clear with how to change the units from one system to another see you in the next video till then bye bye